Hello, hello. And <clears throat> wow, that sounded a little rough. Uh, that's probably because I'm feeling a little rough. I am an on junior, and instead of doing the guitar work uh, I was normally that I was that I intended to do today, because I am feeling a little rough, I'm just going to do some coffee craft. It's just going to be some lightweight filling in the the floors and the walls that we were working on this past Tuesday. So. The goal is for a nice chill stream. Nothing too bad, nothing too rough. Uh, you know, chatting things and figure life out from there. So, last time we got the red floor done. That took a little while, and uh, there's a lot of red. Um, and I do need to put a roof together because just like up this way. Let me double check. Did I close the gate on the other side too? Okay, good. So just just like under here, we've got a decoration separating the roof from the floor above it. I'm going to try to work on some sort of design system for... I don't know if it's going to be unique to each floor or if it's going to be the same for the bottom floors. Because, I mean, these are different given the color tones. I just, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that for each and every floor, but we'll see. We'll see. One, uh, one obstacle at a time. Uh, so, I think since all the upstairs uses the brick, the stone brick, and that does blend in with the brick on the roof. I'm going to have to find something that's not stone brick that blends in with the basalt that has a wall. And honestly, I might I might just do uh 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 some sort of some sort of deep slate wall uh or the blackstone. I could do a blackstone. Although the blackstone's a little dark for that. And so, you know, I, I got uh, I got Blackstone as an option. There's a couple of those. I've got the Deep Slate as an option, which is definitely a closer gray to the Basalt. Um, I mean, <laughs> I could always do Nether Brick Walls, but uh, that that just doesn't seem to fit right. Not, not with that and that. Uh, I might end up using that for something else, though. And, I mean, I have other walls available, but, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure a sandstone wall is not is not going to look right on that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that a brick wall is not going to look right on that. Uh, I mean, I could always go with a mossy wall, since it is, you know, in the dungeon. Need to set up a cask of amontillado down there as well. Anyway, so we got the red one. I still need to work out the design for the walls and the roof, but we got the flooring in, and I want to finish the flooring before I do anything else. Got the orange flooring in all the way around this way, and yeah, th this is definitely where it's going to look a little funky until I get the, the roof designs in, because a red roof and orange floor is not, that's, that's not, no, no. Uh, uh, no. Uh, I still need to do the yellow terracotta. I still need to do the lime terracotta. I hear if you put it in the coconut and mix it all up. Uh, no. I need to get... The, oh, I'm going to need like, what, three... What did we figure it out was? It was, what, a stack per two... So that's one stack, two stack, three stack, three and a half stacks. I'm going to need three and a half stacks of light blue concrete. And I need the magenta terracotta. I still get I still got to push that wall back by a block, dig that coal out because uh, I'll need that and uh, finish finish doing this back hallway and getting that squared away too. And then of course we've got the white room. <laughs> 
Uh, I believe it. I, if it wasn't for the copy strike, I'm pretty sure I'd be obligated to play some Clapton every time I entered and exited the white room. Kids, ask your parents. Wait. Is this going to have to be one of those kids ask your grandparents? Because I don't want to have to think about that. No, no, no. Th this is me very much not thinking about that now that, you know, now that I'm that disturbed by the fact that, uh, you know, White Room came out, what, in the 70s? 60s, 70s? Early 60s. Early 60s? Did you just look that up to poke at me? or No, I'm just oh. I'm just making the number up to poke at you. Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, what do I want to do first? Uh, you know, I'm going to try working for my way down up. That way I don't have to keep racing up and down the stairs. So what do I need first? I'm going to need four-ish stacks of magenta terracotta and I'm going to need the uh, some stone and basalt okay now I got all that in here so I can get the hallway fixed too magenta terracotta okay so how are you doing Arcadius um, I'm here <laughs> I know that feeling. I know that feeling all too well. How about yourself? How are you doing today? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. Shoot. What does it take to make magenta? Is it purple and purple, purple and, and what? Red. Purple and red? Pretty sure. I meant to leave my references up before I went live, but I just had an absent-minded moment. Magenta is purple and pink. Oh. Um. Might any of you sell magenta terracotta? No. Uh. No. Like you can't make magenta. Well, you I know, I have one of the flowers in your farm naturally just turns into magenta, right? Oh, I I, I thought it was purple and well, if it's purple and pink, then that solves the problem too. Uh, for some reason, I, I thought they were not close enough to uh, to what I needed. No, one of them uh, is magenta. One's pink. <laughs> one's magenta. One's yellow. And one's red. All right, what are these guys? That one's the pink one, I think. Yeah, that's the pink one. The next one over is magenta, then. Why do I have a bamboo in... Oh. We don't ask those questions. Oh, well, I mean, I feel like I should. Somebody should. Nope. Oh, magenta. Beautiful. Okay. Glad one of us has a memory. <laughs> I mean, I, I the whole point of making these farms was for this very reason, so that way I'd have, you know, stuff when I need them. Why are you guys crowded? Never mind. I don't, I'm not going to. I was after him to let you just go ahead and try and find all the dyes and stuff, but I was like, no. No, I appreciate that. I, I definitely. Too easy. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> appreciate that. All right. So, I need one stack, two stack, three, and we'll take a half because I can't remember how. Oh, I made too much magenta dye. Ah, well, I'll stick it in storage. Who knows? It may come in handy later. <laughs> Maybe. Can't hurt. Uh, well, you know, uh, have you seen my storage space? It could hurt. Oh, you may find that you need a bunch of uh, 
glazed uh, terracotta. Yeah. Glazed magenta? No. It, it, look, yeah, if, yeah. if I'm going to go do a bunch of uh, glazed magenta terracotta, I'm going to head over to your room in the castle and disco it out. <laughs> Let's reorganize. I'm going to need some of the cyan. Because that is the accent. I'm going to need that. And that. I guess that's about as good as I can get for free space. <laughs> oh, Boyang, the inventory update, please. Please. I mean, that would be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Uh, What's that? The inventory update. Like, everybody wants to know what, what, uh, you know, what's going to be the next big Minecraft update? Uh, the inventory update? Please? Uh, I would accept something as simple as. Terracotta slabs and stairs. <laughs> well, that, but you being able to ride in a like boat with a cart with a chest in it, or um, they did add the chest boat. That is that is in the one dot nineteen that you can ride in. Yeah. Father, what? Okay, what? can you do that with a minecart too? Uh, no, not with a minecart. But you can get things going into a sorter train. That's almost like being useful. No. You see where I was going. Yeah, yeah. Like, make the minecart relevant again. Like, actually, for what it's <laughs> meant for. <laughs> Hashtag like, make minecarts relevant again. Well, I mean, technically, right. I guess you could still do that anyway. Yeah, and I'm not in, I'm not entirely sold on the idea of the minecart as being irrelevant either. Well, outside of moving stuff around it, yeah. You know, what else do you use it for? <laughs> outside of moving stuff around, like yeah, you know, outside of the primary purpose for having such a device, I I don't know what you would use it for. I don't know. <laughs> you can think of other stuff to do with it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But that's the point, is everything else in the game has, like, five million options to use it for. No, not that one. <laughs> not that one, what? No, not the minecart. No. It's got one use. Oh, yeah. You know what that use is? Moving on. Villager <laughs> removal. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've definitely used it to move more mobs than just villagers. Yeah, I guess. Nope, just villagers. <laughs> hey, it beats dragon cows by the leash. Just saying, I'm talking about the average player. You know that they're just going at that I, with a are, lead. Are you saying I am not an average player? Have, have you looked at your base? Yeah. No, you're not an average player. This is nothing. Come on. It doesn't change the statement. Nah. <laughs> okay. Uh, there, there's going to be a long setup to the punchline, so bear with me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Alright. So, on cord killers... They, they are doing, uh, hey, X-Men, uh, they're doing a spoilering time of Westworld. And Westworld is one of those shows that Brian kind of checked out on. Like they, they didn't, they didn't hold his, they didn't hold his attention very well. Uh, the last season was admitted even by the fans as one of the less good, like, you know, for even the people who believe there's no bad season of Westworld, everybody agrees that there has to be a least good season. 
and, and the yeah disqualified. Uh, <laughs> so, in in the interest of experimentation, what Brian decided to do was he was going to participate in all the spoiler and time discussions, but he was not going to actually watch the show at the same time as everybody else. He was just going to join in on the on the chatter about it talk about the you know the theories and the hypothesizing and all that and he would <laughs> that's all right i'm glad you stopped by sorry it's not a guitar day today uh i i just i got this massive headache and it's not yeah it's not conducive to doing work that requires focus and control always welcome So what Brian was going to do is, is just uh, do the spoiler in time stuff, talk about the show, and when, uh, when it came time for the last episode of the season, that was when he was going to binge the entire show. So, so right before they had the spoiler in time discussion on the last episode... He would binge the entire series for that for that season, mm. and he had an absolute blast doing this. Like he he legit had a ton of fun going through and just you know hearing the description, coming up with oh it sounds like they're going to do, and then being right. Uh, he, he really enjoyed that, part, that last part the most. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> I don't know anybody. Yeah. Um, so anyway, his big theory is that for the next season of Westworld, they're going to re review. Ah! Mm. Sorry. Uh, I'm finding holes that I forgot about. <laughs> And I'm not finding them in the helpful way. Um, his big theory is that in the last in the last season, uh, or in the next, at least in the next season of Westworld, they're going to find out that instead of being on a desolate, uh, busted down Earth, they're actually in a spaceship. And he's so keen on this theory that every time they start talking about it, he just starts chanting spaceship. Na 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 spaceship <laughs> and doing his best A C D C. So oh, note that for the last few weeks I've been listening to Brian uh, jump into that every time Westworld comes up. So now, fast forward to, I came back with those donuts earlier in the week, and Reyes is looking at the, dump, at the donuts and finds the one pumpkin donut in the bunch. And I'm like, it's August. It's August. We're not even in the fall. We're, we're not even in the pretense of the fall. It's August. And all she goes is pumpkin. And all I hear is Brian going, pumpkin. Na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Be because, because, yeah, no matter what I said, that's all Rhea said was pumpkin. And it's like, it's August. Pumpkin. It's not even close to fall. Pumpkin. Like, we're not even in September. Like, like, did we skip September and just, you know, pumpkin. <laughs> uh, I don't get it. I just don't. <laughs> huh? Uh, what makes it funnier is she's got pumpkin bread over there. Yeah, I saw that too. And uh, one one of the coffee specialty coffee companies that I hadn't seen before is advertising a pumpkin spice coffee that actually looks pretty nice. 
like it is not it is not my cup of coffee but uh <laughs> it looks like it could be good now now i feel the need to go check and see if death wish has uh released their pumpkin coffee too because that that was actually pretty decent i mean if we're gonna have pumpkin coffee let's we might as well go with some death wish okay I mean, I, I, I'm already getting heart palpitations and whatnot, so let's really go. Let's really go all in on it. No. Yeah, you might want to see a doctor about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm no doctor. No. But that's, no. No. That's, no. Uh, no. No legit heart palpitations, but I am wondering if the headaches are from the recent med change. Okay. And I keep hoping that this is going to be one of those things where, like, it just it sucks for a couple of days but when you when you finally finish getting getting into things it'll all it'll all be all right and uh it's not it's not shaping up that way just yet so tomorrow i'm definitely going to see if i can find where i put the contact information for the doctor you know right right where i wouldn't forget it um that place uh mm -hmm. what you, you know how that goes i'm sure you've also put stuff down right where you wouldn't forget it oh yeah <laughs> yes auntie bus i i know i do need to check in with the doctor sooner than later uh i know that for for this i do need to give it like a week or so before you know before going oh nope definitely a no-go um and so that's that's where that's been at but uh i i do don't let him lie to you auntie bess he doesn't listen to his doctor beat him up <laughs> i listen to my doctor mm -hmm. i listen better than some around this place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we got canes you can borrow auntie bess Uh, but anyway, yeah. So that, that's where that's where that's at. I, I'm still I'm still stuck on the uh, the pumpkin spice. I just like isn't there a too soon? I would have thought there was a too soon. What are you talking about? It's one month away from. Okay, two months away. Uh, okay, month yeah, away yeah, yeah. Two months away. Two months. A month and a half. A month and a half. Nah, uh, 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 you don't. You don't get to keep dialing it back. <laughs> it is not a month. I'm and trying a half. to help him here because it's not as bad as some, you know, stuff. I mean, let's face it. The the, the Christmas stuff. I mean, oh, that's oh like yeah, yeah. Two no. months ago already, <laughs> and it's like what? Uh Are you kidding me right now? I really thought about titling uh, this week. The, today's live stream is decorating the halls, but I, I couldn't bring myself to even make a joke with a Christmas song in it because it's August. <laughs> it's August. We why why? I'm going to remember to mark that too, because uh, I'm definitely going to have to go back and clear that out at some point. You know, I listened to a whole bunch of podcasts, and I thought for sure I was going to remember all sorts of fun stuff to jabber about, but, uh, the, yeah, it, it all just kind of, like, fled for most of it. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. And I, I guess part of it, too, is the, the work I've been doing lately, well, there, 
since there hasn't been a, a lot of work on the shelves, I'm now getting to the dregs of what's on there. All the stuff that you put away for, you know, when there's time. <laughs> yeah, because it's at that level of repair where or disrepair where you kind of like, I mean, I could fix it. I, I should fix it. But... <laughs> and, and so now it's stuff like, you know, grafting F-holes and... Because some, some kid poked the little flare from one of the F-holes through and... Uh, this one. <laughs> I, I'm getting a deeper appreciation by the day for the next guy that has to work on stuff because I am the next guy now. And as the next guy who had to work on this particular repair, I do not appreciate those shenanigans. Because um, <laughs> it, it was, uh, yeah. Mm. That was not fun. That was not fun at all. I came up here for some... Oh, so I, I'm missing Cyan Terracotta. And, uh, and it, yeah, because somebody had poked in the F hole, the one of the flares on the F hole and broke it. Whoever did the last repair on it just puttied in a, a, a fake F hole in the most ham handed, hacky way I have ever seen. Like, it looked like somebody just gobbed on some minwax, uh, you know, putty until it actually until it looked uh, close enough. And it was bad. It was so bad. And then that broke in half. So not even where the original break was. It, I, I'm learning the fine art uh, of cutting a, a proper F-hole replacement. And then gluing it into place in such a way that it won't fall off the next time somebody pokes their thumb at it. Because they're bored in class. I, I'm still kind of feeling some sort of way about the tic-tac-toe game I found on the back of a cello earlier in the summer. <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody had scratched tic-tac-toe in the back of the cello. Oh, that's... Uh, wow. Yeah, it, it, the worst part is, is it belonged to the school. It wasn't even theirs. Mm. Yeah. And I think I'm definitely going to take these outside stairs and move them back one block. But let me get the rest of this flooring in first. <laughs> You're welcome to come help. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? It, it's just a block here and a block there, you know? Hey, you should have had that measured the last time I was there helping. <laughs> well, I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was going to, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Plans change. This, I mean, this is almost this is still better than the chapel project. I think, maybe. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had to think a little too hard on that, good sir. <laughs> you, you, you had to think way too hard on that one. Uh, mm -mm. Cause that that one I know I I went a little little too far with. The, uh, <laughs> it appears there's not enough floor there. I I know that one I struggled a lot with. Oh man, I just need this wall to be another block further back. Well, oh man, that, that's close. Another but three, <laughs> another two, another. Yeah, four. yeah, yeah. I I know that one was uh was. Yeah, it was a little bit of, eh, just one more block here, and another two blocks there, and I mean, it, it's almost, I just need to, you know, yeah.
it, it seemed very reminiscent of uh, a great many traits from all corners of the family. It's such a simple project. How could such a simple project get so complicated? At least that quickly. <sighs> now I got the rest of that. <laughs> Still gotta figure out what I'm gonna put in these walls too. Uh, I, I think I am definitely going to try to figure out a pattern with the glazed terracotta. But I know that's going to be one that I'm going to have to spend a lot of time figuring that out. Especially since it's a three block high gap. Or maybe I'll just pull the, the wainscoting up one, up one more. Alright, now am I in storage space? Yeah. This is why I haven't put in the uh, ceilings yet. Because <laughs> it's a lot easier to do this down here than it is to poke through the poke through the floor and constantly fall through the holes. <laughs> I've had enough of that, thank you very much. I get the uh, the roof on that back hallway up there done too. I still haven't decided if I'm gonna carve out the rooms on the other side too, or what I'm putting in each of these. Or if I need to go down a few more floors. I mean, we're not even at. You know, level zero. Oh, goodness. What? Oh, just you. <laughs> Look, I... I isn't, how this, isn't that how this works? You just keep digging until you see the Balrog, and then you know you've gone too far. And you keep trying to tell us you're not a dwarf. I'm not. It's like the hole is never deep enough for you. <laughs> I'm not a dwarf. I'm waiting for the day you try to break through bedrock at the bottom just to get more blocks. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are no more there are no more blocks b below the bedrock at the bottom. Oh yeah, I forgot the spider spawners like just behind that blo that wall right there. It's maybe two two or three blocks. Yeah, because there's the brick wall on the other side of mine, and there's the wall for the, the spider farm. I really got to find a uh, way to turn that off, so that way when I'm down here, it's not on and running. Oh, uh, oh good. I got a little bit of white terracotta, because I just realized I forgot to... Uh, I forgot to do this one last square. Am I going to do the magenta all the way over here? Hmm. I'll have to think about that one. Well, I mean, I need to, I need to fit a couple of furnace arrays in here. I almost want to, I almost want to get a, uh, get a setup where there's some, uh, tunnels, kind of like uh, the Minecraft equivalent of pneumatic tubes to get stuff up and down the floors. Like, uh, to be able to go up to the storage system and drop a bunch of stuff down to whatever floor I'm working on. And, uh, and vice versa. Be able to run whatever I'm working on up into, up into storage. 
but I'm not entirely sure how I'd figure out how to get it to stop on each or stop at the appropriate floor or on each floor. Getting stuff up to storage is not the problem. Well, no, no, I might be able to make that work. I just got to see where, where I can run the, uh, run the pathways. <laughs> I can fit it all. I mean, sure, it'll look like that cheap subcontractor did it, but, you know, I, I can make a path happen. Goodness. Oh, and uh, this coming Tuesday, Cord Killers is going to talk about She-Hulk. Because that starts tonight? Last night? One of the two. In Marvel's unending quest to uh, capitalize on every property available. Yeah, I mean... What? Yeah, well, and that, that is... That is the question. I, so I've heard some people cautiously optimistic. I've heard some people pretty enthusiastic. And then I've heard some people who are like, yeah, about that shameless money grab. Um, but I mean, all we have to go on right now is the trailers. Yeah, same, same problem that we have for the, uh, the Amazon Lord of the Rings bit. Which... Yeah, I, I don't even know if I'm cautiously optimistic about that either. Oh, I wish I could remember who it was. Uh, somebody bought out the company that had the rights to a bunch of the other uh, Lord of the Rings stuff. Like the... They bought out the parent company of the, the War in the North that we played a while back. And some of the other... Some of the other... Uh, Middle Earth based games. And I'm I'm wondering if they're gonna be a better custodian of that or not. You uh you up for some more Lord of the Rings games to, to start rolling out or uh are you kinda tapped out on Tolkien? Uh I play it because because I want to play with the group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and I was kind of wondering, you know... I'll play a great many games just because <laughs> I want to play with the group. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because War in the North was... Um, <laughs> sad. Yeah. But it was a... It was a multiplayer game. So, I mean, that's... <laughs> Well, it just felt like somebody kind of, like it didn't sit in the oven long enough. Like, you know, with with a little more fit and finish, it could have been a great game. And I, I worry that the property owners are going to jam something together in whatever minimal effort it's going to take to maintain control of the property. Like that's why some of the some of the worst some of the worst movie sequels have uh, have been made because they they they're trying to do the absolute minimum to maintain control of the property. And I mean, I get it. I don't like it, but I get it. one of the other ones. There, there was another one coming out too. Oh, and YouTube TV is starting to feel the crunch so they're getting ready to allow you to buy subscriptions to like HBO Max and stuff like that through your uh, YouTube TV subscription. Although a lot of people... A lot, well, a lot of the people that were writing in said they only subscribed to YouTube TV because that meant that they also got com no commercials in uh, YouTube. <laughs> wow. 
Netflix. All that just so they don't have to deal with commercials. Yep. <laughs> Netflix and Apple are both talking about uh, ad-supported tiers in their streaming services. Or you'll be able to get some portion of the catalog, so long as you don't mind watching ads. Ow. Yeah. Uh, Disney released a very impressive number, while the fine print uh, mentioned that that was the number if you added Hulu, ESPN, and Disney Plus all t or Apple Plus altogether. No, not out. No, not Apple. Disney. It was Disney because Disney owns uh, ESPN and uh, Hulu. Mm. Yeah. Apple's just being Apple, trying to buy up rights to uh, as many sports as they can get their hands on. Like somebody, somebody picked up most of MLS soccer, and I forget, I forget who it was. Uh, Paramount? Was that Paramount? Well, I know you can watch a great well, deal of it if you have... Uh, Paramount Plus? Uh, yeah, whatever goes along with Paramount Plus. It may just be Paramount Plus, I don't know. I don't think I made enough. You can also content. watch like Voyager and stuff on it, whatever that yeah. one's called. Well, I, I mean, the Star Trek is one of the big, big properties that uh, Paramount has to its okay, name. Okay, so it is Paramount then. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, it's the same. Well, like if it wasn't for Star Trek, they they wouldn't have nearly the catalog that they have. Yeah, they. Uh... Although I don't know if it's for contractual reasons or they were actually thinking ahead um, that they that they actually have a decent uh, that uh, all the all the all the Star Trek stuff is available on on uh, more platforms than just Paramount plus. And, and I like that. So, like, Amazon Prime is... You can get most of the Star Trek stuff up through uh, Enterprise. And I think it's all the stuff after they launched uh, Paramount Plus that you can only get through Paramount Plus. Which, I mean... I, I really wish they, they stopped with that kind of... Those kind of shenanigans. Like, just... just Put, put the content out and, and let us watch it and and then every, everything will be good. Hello Beach Duck. How are you doing today? I feel like I should be giving you a hard time about something but I'm not sure what. <laughs> everything. Today is supposed to be a little bit more of a laid-back stream. While I sit here and go, yeah, I need to move these outside sets of stairs back one block and, uh, and maybe move. <laughs> Why are you moving the outside stairs back? Um, I thought it made the wall less flat with the uh, stairs poking out. Yeah... Uh, Otherwise, it's just a flat box room, which gets a little boring. Oh no! no well, really, but I'm not. I'm not finished with that either. Okay. And where are all the cats coming from? Your villagers. Is that from? They is that you, from? They keep hiring the little assassins to come kill you. Yeah. Uh, or to press all the keys on my keyboard. Oh, I don't think I posted that one to the Discord. Uh, so somebody somebody's been sharing uh, one of the memes going around where uh, somebody's laptop 
has that feature where it takes a picture of whoever's at the keyboard after the third failed password attempt, and it's a picture of their cat. No. I, I'm not hearing anything that's abnormal, so... <laughs> I know, I know, uh, I know. Mary Jo Foley is having, a, still having trouble with uh, her cat Sirachi. Um, usually, he's fine during the podcast, but every now and again, uh, he, he gets a little antsy and apparently attacks the uh, the microphone or the camera because <laughs> you know there are things dangling in front and cat. Like, I remember one time Leo had to cut to a very early commercial break because Sirachi leapt out of Mary Jo's lap at the camera just all of a sudden, randomly. <laughs> like, like <laughs> leapt out of her lap at the camera, and all you saw was the camera fall over the back of the laptop, and Leo goes, all right, let's, uh, let's have a word from our sponsor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, while Mary wow. Joe figured out how to get <laughs> to get everything back together again. It, it, yeah. That. That is funny. And that is why I prefer dogs. <laughs> I mean, Jubba would never get in that kind of trouble much. Today. Oh, are we talking about the same dog? <laughs> I mean, this is the same one that, uh, you know, we went to bed and the door got left open and this is before we had the giant Tupperware and he thought it was snack time. Yeah, well. Maybe. I thought you were going to go with stealing all the shoes and putting them in pairs. No, that's just weird. That, that, that legit's just weird. Is it weird or is it just or just a lab thing? Like, I have no idea. I thought it was just weird until Pinky got her shelter mix with lab, and apparently it did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. That well, that's that's what made me wonder. Like. All right, so I mean, it's not chewing on the shoes. Yeah, I and mean, it didn't do the exact same thing because that was the weird thing about yeah. Jabba didn't like eat the shoes or chew on them or even get any slobber on them. He just took the shoes and put them in his kennel in, in pairs. pairs. <laughs> yes, and, and you're saying being trained by Rast, he would not put them in pairs, two by two, in neat little rows. I'm just, I don't, it's, it's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you're avoiding the question. Oh, I'm not answering that question whatsoever. <laughs> that is a trap, good sir, and I will not play with those shenanigans. No? You're not going to ignore no. Admiral Akbar? Mm. All right, so the flooring for the white room is done. The flooring for the magenta room is done. Although now I got that big old hole in the wall that I really do need to seal off. Although I think I got that lit up well enough. <coughs> Alright, while well I got the inventory space, let me go ahead and grab that coal out of the wall and then, uh, and then I can seal this up as part of the, the next step. What's up this way? Oh, that goes out. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that's that emergency tunnel I had to dig so I could find the zombie that stole my armor way early in the season when I was trying to light these caves up. <laughs> I, I'm actually wondering if there isn't still a zombie floating around these caves that hasn't despawned. <laughs> And he's got my iron armor from, like, beginning of the season. Because <laughs> I know once they once they pick up stuff like that, they, they don't... 
They don't despawn. I really should fill that in, but... I'm just not feeling it today. I really am wondering because I, I know I know uh, getting the walkways and whatnot faith uh, set up. I found a couple of caverns of nope that I was definitely gonna have to come through with a couple of stacks of torches and maybe some backup. Uh, <laughs> because they they were <laughs> yeah yeah that. There were some creepers around, there was some other stuff around. It, it was not... This was definitely not Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. <laughs> Alright, light blue. I'm gonna need... What? Four stacks of light blue? So the three and a bit didn't quite cover me. But that's also because I needed to do this side, but I'm going to have to do the roof. Uh, so let's go five stacks of light blue concrete. What's a little extra? Although the concrete's not stuff you can re-dye. I'm sure I'll find a use for it. bricks after all. Get a little more of that stone in there. Although I, I should, I really should go back there and trade. I'm hang out to the torches. Alright. Uh, so I'm going to need light blue dye. I'm going to need... Uh, four stacks of gravel, four stacks of sand, and I'm going to need more light blue dye. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Oh. Miscalculations have been made. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I was okay with extra. <laughs> All right, now we get to show off how this uh, how this works. You, you fill up the dropper with uh, concrete powder. You hold down both mouse buttons, and it gives you a fresh concrete powder every time you every time you make a, a turn it to from concrete powder to solid concrete. Every time you put the powder next to water, even if it is moving water like we got there, it um, converts the powder into concrete, which <laughs> sometimes is what you want, and sometimes is most definitely not what you want. Just depends on how you're building. Eventually, I am going to build a giant concrete maker of doom. That instead of requiring you to uh, waste your pickaxe durability on concrete, um, will uh, push the push the concrete over to a TNT chamber, because with Minecraft the way TNT works is it drops 100% of whatever it blows up, and uh, it's a nice way to convert a lot of stuff from uh, blocks in the world to items. Nice. Yeah. I gotta find a spot and I gotta find a TNT chamber design, or at least uh, figure out how to figure it out myself. Although, I, I am really curious at the uh, <laughs> the, the nether wart uh, 
tree farm that he put together and see if I can reverse engineer that because it's a lot simpler than the one that I built in season one and uh, that 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 is kind of nice although it's not as um, self-sustaining so instead of take you know painstakingly trying to preserve all the all the nether wart that falls through It, uh, it does. There we go. Oh, wait. How do I still have, uh... Oh, I wonder, I wonder, oh, okay. Never mind. I, I I think I realize what's happening. The okay. The observer there is double double pulsing, and so that's dropping two concrete powder when it's only supposed to be dropping one concrete powder. I'll have to fix that later. I just realized I can replenish some of the durability because every time you trade with these guys, it gives you XP. And I know I'm going to need to be able to... <laughs> to put those emeralds to use purchasing more terracotta. At some point in the very near future. Down, down, down to Goblin Town. I still got to get around to re uh, recording the uh, <laughs> um. I want to make a, vo a zombie voice texture pack, <laughs> but instead of the the usual groans that they do, I have it so that way they're going brew. Coffee. <laughs> Me. Coffee. <laughs> that could be nice. Could be. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if it actually turns out. You know. Uh oh. Give me back all the blocks. Waste not, want not. But I, I get a. I I think I found a good template for that. So that way I would be able to uh, to have something to work off of. Basic shapes. Oop. Yeah, I think I found a good template pack for not just the zombies, but a bunch of other mobs. So it's now just making sure that I have the time to record the custom voices like I did for the villagers. You know, all those guys that you're shouting, say, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah, because this is, that's where the blue, okay, yep, yep, yep. Just double checking. Making a list. Checking it thrice.
Oh, Tom did release another uh, A Word with Tom Merritt. And this was a pretty good one talking to Ron Richards about fans and fandoms and that kind of thing. Um, but so if you remember the last time I, I tried to remember all the this or that questions, only half of them are consistent from host to host. The rest are it it depends on what the host is like. Ron works for Marvel, so there were some this or that questions pertaining to uh, Marvel and Marvel properties. Uh oh, is this more of those do zombies run or not? So yeah, so you know, <laughs> well, it was fast or slow zombies. Um, I think I think you'd feel qualified to answer uh, this or that sweet or savory crepes. Sweet. Really? Why? Why would anyone want Why would anyone want a savory crepe? That's not what crepes are for. It's not. No. But savory tastes crepe. No. <laughs> no. 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 Negative. Exo. You, you're, you're that. That opposed to a savory crepe. Yeah. Yeah, crepe is dessert. Or breakfast. I mean, you know, people eat pancakes for breakfast. Why not? Uh, uh huh. Yeah, people do eat pancakes for breakfast. So, and you often have bacon with your pancakes. So, you know, why, why, not, why not a savory crepe? Because just because you put bacon with your pancakes does not make your pancakes savory. Those pancakes are still sweet because you still slathered butter uh, and you slathered butter. Doused uh. them. <laughs> Don't you lie to people on the internet and douse them in you know whatever syrup you love. Oh no no no! I, I totally douse it in maple syrup. Not not gonna not gonna deny that one. Okay, so is that sweet or savory? Do I look like the chef? I'm the guy who dumps a can that, of everything. That's sweet. <laughs> that's, that's sweet. You need a dental appointment afterward. It's it's sweet. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. You're making my point for me. Am I though? Yeah. How? Oh my goodness, dude. Because, I mean, I'd have both okay. on the same plate. <laughs> Go ahead. Give it all. I'm not saying that the people that have savory crepes are heathens and need to be drug out in the street. But I am saying that there's something wrong with them and they need to see a doctor. That, that's all I'm saying. And I'm no. going to end it. <laughs> okay don't hold back tell me what you really think <laughs> I'm just saying you go okay you go out you go to like where creeps were, were first started you, you go out to the street you start walking around the carts mm -hmm. and I dare you to find me a savory you know Hey, this is America. We can make anything savory. I mean, okay. sure, we're 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 number one with heart for heart conditions for a reason. I'm not, I'm not talking about like some southern fair where you can get it in like the crepe with the uh, four tons of. You know, gravy and biscuits. Nah, I, I was getting ready to say. Now, I I'm surprised <laughs> I haven't seen a a a uh, southern diner with crepes that have uh, some of that that thick uh, sausage gravy that you usually put on a biscuit. That would just be so nasty. <laughs> It'd be so horrible. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll go with you on that one. Because, I mean, it's not the same batter, but it 
it's close enough, and it's done extremely thin. I mean, in all intents and purposes, if you want to be an uneducated person, you could say it's an extremely thin pancake. If you wanted to be an une uneducated person. I, I have other words I could use, but I'm not going to. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> that. I do try to keep it family friendly. Exactly. That's <clears> why I'm <throat> trying to dance around words here. Um, but yeah, so it's basically, if we break it down for people, it is, a, it is extremely flat, very thin, you know, unleavened pancake that you roll up with whatever goodies you want inside. I, I'm pretty sure you could find, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure in Durham you, or, or Raleigh you could find just about any kind of great place that you want. There's supposed to be one uh, near where we live that ha has is supposedly got some amazing crepes. I don't entirely trust the taste of the individual who recommended it, so... You know, I'd say with a grain of salt, but this is the South, and apparently a grain is not enough salt. I mean, it's not Southern if you didn't take a whole heaping spoonful of salt. But no, that uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the place because we we had a temp coming in to help with brass while our normal brass tech was on reserve duty, and the the district manager was trying to tell her of all the places that were nearby that were pretty good, and that was the one place I thought for sure I would remember without having to write it down, and. You'd think I'd learn by now. You really would. I mean, how can I not remember that I have so much trouble remembering? <laughs> okay, to be fair, to get off of my eye horse now that you've got an answer out of me, mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite crepes, there was this place called... Uh, Either Polly's or Paul's or something diner um, that uh, I used to frequent a bit. And they had both sweet and savory crepes too. Well, one of my favorites was they had a uh, Grandmama's apple uh, pie crepe, which was this, Ooh. you know, cinnamon apple crepe which was just amazing and then they also had this um, I forget what they called it but basically it had uh, turkey green cheese I am completely missing some, uh, something green <laughs> <laughs> something green <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that covers a fair amount of ground, good sir. Can't remember if it was... I don't think it was spinach. I think it was like broccoli. I, th I think it was broccoli. I think it was broccoli. Anyway, that thing was amazing. So I ain't gonna lie about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but you are gonna get all... They need to be sweet. Yes. If you're gonna make me choose a side, it's sweet. Okay. Because of the two, if you're gonna force, if you're gonna hold a gun to my head and force me to choose one of them, I'm getting that granny pie apple. Or, yeah, that thing was. <laughs> mm. like, I can't even talk hey, straight. Look, you got me. You got me an apple, especially here. especially if it's some sort of Granny Smith. But I don't know what apple it was. It just it was phenomenal. Yeah, that does sound good. 
All right. I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're old enough to answer this you question. Smack your grandma for not uh, cooking so good, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're old enough to answer this question, but he also asked every guest the sound of a dot matrix printer or the sound of a laser printer. Have you even heard the sound of a dot matrix printer? Like. Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. Like, like, I mean, that, that's a valid question. No, it's not. Y yes, it is. Oh, if you ask somebody about 10 years younger than me, yeah, that would make sense. But I had to deal with dot matrix printers up until high school, maybe halfway through high school. I think, I, I think even up until I graduated. I think they were still using one or well, two in the main uh, okay. office. Okay, yeah. No, if we're if we're talking school systems, they they are notorious for uh, um, how shall we put it? Uh, struggling with keeping current on technology. Yeah, that, that's how we'll put it. All right, so then the sound of a dot matrix printer or the sound of a uh, laser printer? I notoriously hate the sound of a laser printer. I think it's just, it grinds my eardrums to pieces. I, it, it makes me want to, like, clack my teeth just to have something else to hear in my head. But the dot matrix printers, those never really bothered me. They just make me think of like old school typewriters. Not exactly. <laughs> like I, I was gonna say up. if you if you want if you're going with a printer that that sounds like a like a typewriter, then you're talking the Daisy Wheel. Well, maybe, but just the same. It's it, it's got enough of a rhythmic you know going to it that it's one of the things you can. After you've been around it enough, you yeah. just push it to the back of your head. Whereas the laser printer, because the wheel, the wheel, I don't know, runs down or the laser gets out of, you know, tune or whatever the case may be, that thing seems to have a different pitch in audio mm. every time it runs. So it's like, even from page to page, it doesn't seem to have the same audio, even if you're printing nothing but black text on white paper. It just I, it grates your nerve. <laughs> I remember in college, in the computer lab, uh, for some, some of the programming languages, we, we had to work on an old Unix mainframe. And if you forgot to properly write your program such that it actually finished the print job, um, your mistake was draped all across your workstation by the person who had to maintain the, the server and printer. If he had to forcibly stop your print job, he would make sure to very artfully and, and obviously glaringly decorate your station with your print failure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was because we were, we we're still learning Cobalt for some reason. Not Cobalt. Cobol. C-O-B-O-L. <laughs> Bald is something a little different. Although I'm pretty sure they too would also hoard the green bar paper. one other that he that he asked everybody on the regular and now that I'm trying to remember it I, I it it just escapes me I, 
because I know a lot of the rest of them really depended on who on who he was talking to. But anyway, the, the recent episode on fandom was pretty good. Uh, from the origins of the term to uh, some rather long and drawn out sidebars. I, I kind of like that it's a more, more casual interview than what Tom normally does. I mean, it shows that he's a little more versatile than just the, the headline news type stuff that he does with uh, Daily Tech News Show. And the related show that he's done with, uh, you know, at various companies over the over the years. I still need to get back into Sword and Laser as well. I haven't listened to that in a long time. It's a sci-fi fantasy book club type podcast that he does with uh, Veronica Belmont. And they often ask if a person is, is, if they prefer sword or laser in their speculative fiction. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I, I've been going through uh, my copies of various Eberron books, so I'm leaning a little more sword than laser. Although you could argue the one that focuses a lot on psionics has the next best thing to uh, some laser. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you've picked it up yet, but I know I've recommended the Heirs of Ash to you a couple of times. That was a really nice trilogy. Ray asked, re read me the uh, summary that they have on the <laughs> on the Amazon page, and it does not do the series justice at all. Well, I still feel like at some point I might want to get the audiobook just so I can know how some of the some of the names and stuff are actually pronounced <laughs> uh, unless it's like whoever uh, read your Codex Alera series where they kept talking about the Legionaries and, and for the life of me I, I, it was the same author for the uh, Shardax duology who kept with the really weird pronunciation of stalagmites that I can't even I can't even screw it up that way if I tried <laughs> I, I I don't know how they did it but yeah <laughs> don't know what to don't know how to help you with that one <laughs> uh, and word is that butcher's gonna revisit Alara after all and do do another series um, that takes place after after the uh, the last one. Like sometime forward as uh, the next attack is about to be in. Hmm. We'll see what happens. Yeah. The Codex Alera series started out really good the first couple of books, and then it, it kind of, for me at least, it, it trailed off a little bit at the at the end. Um, it came up a, the the whole series came up again because somebody was complaining about one of the scenes in a Dresden Files book, and uh, one of the people in in the forum said, "Yeah." Jim only included that because somebody bet him that he couldn't write that kind of a scene and make it feel like it fit. And it's like, so how many things does Butcher write on a bet? Because the whole six, was it six books? Yes. Yeah. The whole six book run of Codex Alera came from a bet that he couldn't take two dumb ideas, mash them together and make a successful series out of them. No, no, no. No. The 
the bet was that he couldn't take two random, like, the crowd picked topics and make a story with them. And he counter bet them by saying, not only can I make a story, I can get it published. Okay. I, I knew it and was something along he those turned lines. Around and not only got it published, <laughs> but made six books out of it. Yeah. And if you haven't read Codex Lair, hopefully this might pique your interest. The two topics are the Roman... Yeah, the Lost uh, Legion. Missing Legion. And Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so if that piques your interest, have fun. Yeah. It, I, it, like I said, it started off really good. Uh, for me, it kind of trailed off towards the last couple books, but that that is also me. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, I'll agree. The, the next to last book was nothing to me, but it felt like nothing but filler. Like, you needed to burn time. <laughs> it was... Like, we get to get from here to there, and uh, how do we make... Th- oh, okay, here's how we make that happen. Yeah, it was, it was meh. I just couldn't get into it, didn't like it. It was... Bleh. I need lime terracotta. Do I mix the lime with the coconut? Yes. Wait, no. No? No. Yes? No? What's the right answer here? I thought you mixed the lime with the coconut and you drank it all up. That's my go-to, but I mean, I don't know if... (laughs) (laughs) Come on, I know one of you sells... There we go. Although I'm not sure if that's uh, gonna be enough or not, but we'll see. All right. You can't do. I can't recolor the concrete, so that can go away. Um, I need. Is it just the lime? I think it's just the lime. I need more lime dye is what I need. Uh, how am I in green? All right, uh, some green and white. And I need more white. Let's see if that's enough. And I guess I just have a bunch of extra line. ceiling down here, so I don't need to worry about that. Have you been hunting down any new book series, or are you just uh, revisiting favorites like I've been? 
Um, I don't know if you can call it revisiting or not, because you know my thing about doing audiobooks over uh, yeah, reading. So, um, you know, yay, dyslexia. Um, you were speaking about... Uh, getting an audiobook so you could learn pronunciations and for the longest time I'm gonna come full circle to that comment <laughs> for the longest time I always thought that one of the warlords from the X-Wing series one of the uh, he was actually a captain and when the emperor fell he took his fleet uh, now is this one of the it's, it's one of the actual sketchy. Star Wars ones or one of the quote unquote led you know no, they just re-released it oh it's it's there now they're they're going book by book because the minute it came out <laughs> uh, I got it off because uh, I pre pre-ordered it the minute it came out I got a notification like it got added to my library I got the notification that it was added to my library because it pre-ordered. I got a notification that the next one was available for pre-order. Oh. Okay. I, I honestly think they're about to give us the entire X-Wing series. But anyway, oh. getting back to the point real quick before we get lost on another rabbit trail. Us? <laughs> lost? Never. Uh, yeah. Uh oh. The time has come. Um, the alarm has said to speak of many things. <laughs> well, anyway, the uh, the warlord in question who just dogs the New Republic because when the Emperor falls, he takes command because he's only in command of his Star Destroyer. He goes above, above his pay grade and through the help of his entire crew, which the entire crew mutinies with him, uh, proclaiming him a warlord, which gives him basically the status in the old Imperial as a unofficially marked uh, Grand Admiral. <laughs> so all of his entire sector's fleet uh, has the choice of joining him or coming to blows with him. And most of them liked his leadership enough that they joined him because he is an underhanded fox when it comes to battle. You can just, join me or, you know. <laughs> yeah, because he, he's a conniving little genius. Um, if, if he can fight you coming from the side, he's going to do that instead of fade this you had on, which is why it's so problematic that when he mutinied and took everything over, he went a sector over and got his hands on Iron Fist. Hmm. One of the seven uh, Kuat Drive Yard Super Star Destroyers that was created. Okay. So he's in possession of a Super Star Destroyer as his flagship. Now, if that's not hitting you the way it should, um, these things are bristling with weapons. They have a crew of half a million. They are the be-all, end-all of advanced. Well, it was more I was trying to figure out how we got from here from the pronunciation thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, his name, for the longest time, I'll digress on the Star Wars lore. I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> for the longest time, I have, and I'm talking like 10 years or more, I've always thought his name was Warlord Zinj. Okay. It's not? No. It's Jinja. Wait. wait. Uh, I, I, I thought this was going to be like Singe. And it's like, okay, I can see, I can see how that could be a, a little, little slip, uh, you know. No, no, ginger. Well, 
Like, yeah. I'm going to go get a ginger ale? Mm, no, no, it's, it starts with a Z. <laughs> Just, yeah. Okay. Somehow, I don't know what influence it comes from, but yeah, it's whatever that spelling huh. is, it's it's pronounced z uh, ginger. Okay. Gin ginger or ginger? They say it so fast. But it's not zinge, which is what I always thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I mean, we can't all uh, keep track of our legionaries. Oh, goodness. <laughs> if you're not careful, you're going to trigger somebody over here. Yeah, I know. That might even be a secondary goal, but... Mm. Although I guess, uh... I was gonna say, you know... Help on this kind of project's always welcome, but, uh... I don't think Ray's computer's running right enough to, to manage this. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, she has times where it can run No Man's Sky and then she has times where it like coughs to death on like Notepad. Skyrim which is like <laughs> should be nothing compared to No Man's Sky uh, you say that uh, one, one of the things that I've been noticing is that as time has gone on the programming ethos of there's only but so much space and memory available has switched to eh, everybody's got gigs, so I can be sloppy. And when everybody's sloppy, uh, <laughs> you know, of course, then again, I also listen to Security Now with Steve Gibson, whose spin right still fits on a one and a quarter floppy. Hmm. Okay, then. I, I, matter of fact, I think the 6.1 release is going to be the first one that doesn't fit on a floppy. But it will handle terabyte-sized hard drives with... Uh, I forget how much faster, but it, it was enough that it makes regular maintenance runs on multi-terabyte hard drives uh, more appealing than the 6.0 version. And he found out that he thought solid state hard drives were going to make spin rate obsolete. And uh, the, the lower level scans uh, coincidentally help fix a number of problems on solid state hard drives. There was a big long technical explanation that uh, my eyes kind of glazed over on. Yeah. I mean, if your eyes glazed over on it, I'm probably going to go to sleep, so. Yeah. How cold. Probably use that as a new coma medicine. <laughs> I mean, there's good stuff. That, uh, there, uh, there's been some interesting new security flaws, but I mean, now we're getting into the really esoteric stuff. Like, somebody figured out that they could alter a particular memory address by doing rapid succession read writes in the row of memory next to the one they want to change. And just because of the constant bit flipping, it would uh, create an error that would cause error correction to make a change in each bit that they were trying to influence. So they, they could create enough noise next to the one they wanted to flip that error correction would flip it. And memory makers have finally figured out how to how to stop that from happening. So they figured out how to do it from two rows over. <laughs> 
and you know you go hmm okay i mean you know this sounds like yeah that's interesting um except for server applications it can be used to figure out things like the cryptographic key used to secure the server and other slightly important information like that <laughs> oh, you don't say yeah Uh, there's something that affects all the IoT stuff using outdated wireless drivers and just the thousands and thousands of Internet of Things devices that uh, will never receive an update because they can't. It is literally burned into the chip. Because as we all know, the S in IoT stands for security. Does it really? Does does it really? Well, I mean, Troy Hunt's getting ready to start uh, doing the the speaking circuits again, starting with uh, the upcoming NDC Oslo. Uh, he's been talking about possibly doing a adults only internet security thing because. Uh, <laughs> The subject matter involved definitely uh, is more of a grown-up nature. And some of the language used is more of a grown-up nature. Um, apparently one of the more recent data breaches comes from a service that ostensibly sends the person you hate that much a box of crap. You can even pick which animals crap it is and so there's all these records of passwords and the addresses of which the stuff was sent the messages that the person included in said uh, mailing of crap and yeah it, it's he, he tried to give an example of some of the messages that people left while bleeping out the parts that left his podcast at the same family friendly uh, nature and struggled a little bit including the security guard who held a grudge against somebody who yelled at him three years ago that when he finally left that job, he sent multiple boxes of excrement to various people who had pissed him off while he worked at that company. <laughs> How petty do you have to be? Uh, well, there's 2,700 and some odd people that... uh have unique email addresses and records of purchase. <laughs> to, to answer that question. <laughs> I just can't with these people. This, this is just, why? Why? Uh, yeah, it, uh, uh, there, there's a few other ones in there, too. Uh, he's also having a lot more fun with his password purgatory, which I think we talked about before. But uh, basically, he got tired of spammers wasting his time. So especially people that want to try to buy an article on his website. So instead of deleting them or telling them no... He sends them an automated message in return that says, I, I'm definitely interested if you'd please set up an account at this web page. And the account page is set up that you will never be able to pick a password that fits the criteria. Like every time you submit a password, it, uh, 
it, it picks a new reason why that's wrong. So, you know, it starts with simple ones like must contain an uppercase, must contain a special character, must begin with cat, must end with dog, must include a Simpsons character, <laughs> must e e even up to stuff like, you know, must include the name of a river in Norway. And it's just hundreds of those kinds of rules. So you will never, never get a password criteria that fits. And he's trying to see how much of their time he can waste in return for all of his time that they've wasted. Wow. <laughs> And now he's working on ways to improve improve the service, so that way uh, it it also includes things like uh, you know, so you can see how long they spent and what their choices were. And he's like, this just reinforces to me how horrible people are at picking passwords, because you know the the initial attempt was one two three four one two three four, and <laughs> must include a special character, so they put an exclamation point at the end, like. He, he said it's amazing how everybody capitalizes, you know, if it says you need a capital letter, they just capitalize the first letter. Uh, you know, must contain a number or a special character, and the last one is an exclamation point zero, one, or nine. Um, you know, just running through all the root behavior that everybody does. No comment. No? No comment? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I need... What's next? I need yellow terracotta. This one I know I should have a bunch of, or I can get a bunch of really easy. Hello. Oh no, 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 not the cyan. and twos that I can't uh, I can't sell all right I can't uh, complete sentences with and uh, what you got no you just got glazed who's got somebody somebody's got yellow terracotta right nope. oh, I can at least buy a bunch of that and turn it Uh, all I had the emeralds for? It can't be all I had the emeralds for. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, never mind. Still got a bunch of terracotta in there. Okay. 
Let's stop stealing my cyan. We'll see if that's enough. Oop. Need to grab that saying that I rescued. If nothing else, this is definitely colorful. <laughs> oh, I need more um, polished basalt. Do I not have more in there? Alright, I got one more stack. We'll see how far that gets me. And this should be enough. Most of what I need it for is finishing up these hallways. you working on over there anyway? Oh, trying to learn this game. Which one? Pretty cool. No Man's Sky. Ah. Controls take a minute to get used to, but otherwise it's a pretty fun game. Yeah, I've heard a few people recommend it. I am tempted to see if Monster World is still on sale for my, uh, I need something Ooh. mindless to do. It was for a little while. Nice. I know Beast Lord talks about that one pretty yeah. highly. And that was one of the reasons. Although, unfortunately, like a lot of a lot of games, it doesn't allow cross play between the console and the PC. And I don't get that one because you're working cooperatively, not against each other, so 
I mean, who cares if the superior console controls are superior if you're working together? Superior console controls? Or the superior PC controls, I'm sorry. I was about to say, are you smoking something? No. <laughs> That's no, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm running on fumes and... <laughs> I mean, there's a part of me that's going, I really do need to stop right now. And there's a part of me going, but I think I'm almost done. <laughs> You're not almost done. You got a long way to go. Hey, x and M, how you doing, bud? Hey, x and M, how's it going? Trying to do a, uh, a lazy Friday. <laughs> Trying to fill in the decorations for the, uh, the floors and roofs. Because I dug out a bunch of a bunch of rooms that I have yet to find a good purpose for, but uh, I'm gonna set up some of the some of the farms that I had out here in each of the different floors, and uh, trying to get them all color coded. So like this is gonna be the red room. I'm gonna put a roof in that hides the floor from the spot above, and then yeah, old Roy. We got the orange and the yellow and. Uh, green, so on and so forth. Um, I also, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta finish widening out some of these hallways. I, I kind of, I thought the design would work that I had before, and then I forgot some stuff, and yeah, things weren't fitting the way that they should. So you know, I knocked this wall back in a, you know a couple of blocks, and that wall over a couple of blocks. And I'm about ready to move all these stairs back one block. Just the ones on the outside though, the ones close to the wall. I also keep accidentally finding holes in the, in the walls and the floors. So how are you doing, Axonim? Because I've seen some of the photos on Twitter of the various dinosaur sculptures that you've been doing, and those things look awesome. That's good. That's good. I, I don't know what to call this, but uh, <laughs> they they keep trying to tell me that I'm building a dwarven keep, but I, I'm not. I'm not so sure. I haven't hit the Balrog yet. It, it's not a true dwarven keep until you uh, dig deep enough to find the Balrog. Yeah, but I I want to tame one to keep out uh, unexpected visitors, like uh, all, all the all the door to door salesmen and you know telemarketer types. Can can I get a Balrog that just uh, deals with those guys? <laughs> yeah, somebody rings the doorbell because <laughs> they're here to sell me sell me an encyclopedia set or something. Let the fire demon answer. Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure even even a Balrog could be bought off with some thin mints or. Uh, all right, what, what what's everybody's favorite Girl Scout cookie? Because I know y'all have one. I mean, you got me with anything that has peanut butter. Yeah, I just can't remember the name. Is it a tag along that's got the peanut butter? Yeah, I can't remember either. I, I, I just look remember. until I see the ingredient and point and go, that one. <laughs> I like the lemon drop. Those are good. I'm not not that big on lemon. Yeah, 
That's why we can't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, all of them are dangerous. I, I, when I worked for the hospital, one of the one of the nurses had a daughter in Girl Scouts, and you knew it was cookie time when everybody was lined up in the parking lot buying Girl Scout cookies out of the back of her van like it was some sort of some sort of a crack deal uh, <laughs> I mean I I, I it I mean I was getting ready to say I mean I guess in a way it, it kind of was but <laughs> It was just really odd to look out my office window and see everybody gathered around the back of the van exchanging cash for uh, plastic bags. <laughs> sure, they're they're the you know the plastic grocery bags filled with Girl Scout cookies, but uh, you know, it, it was definitely a scenario ripe for misunderstanding. <laughs> Look, security was in line with the along with the nurses, so yeah, that that wasn't going to be an issue. I think the only there was only one person who would have actually caused trouble, and since he was in another building, uh, like, like if you if you want to talk uh, D and D lawful good, then yeah, that that's this guy, uh, of course. He was also in charge of the uh, information uh, security, so... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to stop you right there. What? I don't care how lawful good you are. You're talking about a line of feral nurses, <laughs> cookies, <laughs> and you being a single paladin trying to come between them? <laughs> You would have to be a complete IQ one, like, you know, spit coming out the side of your mouth. Hey, just Don't. remember, pa paladins <laughs> may be uh, multi-attribute dependents, but intelligence isn't one of them. Just saying, that's like a death wish. <laughs> I mean, I I almost want to do that at a D and D campaign. Play play a uh, paladin with like an intelligence of eight. Or a feral nurse? I mean, no, know. no. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good bad guy. I wonder. What, I guess their CR would be like an eight, kind of like a figure out how you'd a stat feral that. vampire. I mean, yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, what, what do you do for the head nurse? Make that one uh, one more plus one to the CR. Yeah, accident. That's <laughs> that's a smart way to get your head bit off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah of course that was the same guy who who looked at me we were talking about you know some of the i was trying to get approval for some software and, and he was talking about you know the dumb software that some people install and just you know and during the conversation he looks at me and he goes yeah you're you're more neutral good yeah neutral good and I didn't realize it at the time that he was trying to fit me in the D&D &D grid and I'm like neutral good I well okay I usually follow the protocols I might have a couple of portable apps because I was tired of fighting yeah that's that's just neutral <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 leaning towards the chaotic there. Uh, no, no, because I actually did research, and it wasn't just some random program that said, "Hey, click me, I can help you." Uh, that's well, that's, that's you where I think he was getting stupid. the good. I was just saying, like, you don't like, follow the law. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't even trying to bend the law to your will. Which I mean, would be you I didn't go out of my evil. way. I didn't go out of my way to break protocol. I just, you know. If I felt it was right, I might make it work anyway. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, you have you have no idea. Uh, you have no idea the people who would apparently call the help desk with all the weird problems with their browser, and it has eighteen toolbars and thirty-two pop-ups because you know somebody wanted a, a spell checker installed on a browser that already had a spell checker installed, or some stuff like that. It, it got, it got special. <laughs> That's one word for it. Yeah. Although we, we dodged a bullet a few times. There was, there was another place that, uh, yeah, never mind. I, I won't get into that. I, I'll get away from that place lest my blood pressure go back up again. <laughs> that, okay, of all the possible answers to that, that was not the one I would have expected. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I've known, I've known some places where a keg in the staff office probably wouldn't have been out of place. And even at my current job, I'm running into some of the weird, weird restrictions that somebody decided to make. Uh, it is possible that I theoretically may have um, academically worked out a workaround for some of the absurd limitations put on us. Stri strictly, strictly theoretical. And I noticed that one of the workarounds got fixed uh, a couple days after I theoretically figured it out. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Uh, well, yeah. I, I've worked with some very smart IT people, and, and I've, uh, never mind. Especially since a lot of it is more, uh, the, the bureaucracy end of it. Like, nobody should need to do that. Well, I got news for you. When I'm trying to get in touch with Tom about a part, and I can't even figure out what the part is, all I can do is send a photograph with a couple of rulers next to it for scale. Oh, speaking of scale, uh, one of my knuckle buster projects today was a, a 1 16th violin. I mean, these things are just shy of being a, a desktop display. Like, they're small. So small. I mean, according to some people, they're cute, but uh, <laughs> the, the, this one probably didn't fall under that category. Oh, I might need to mute the mic for a second while Jibba gets fed. He's very loud and noisy, but it's only for a very, very short time.
and the beast is being satiated for the next, you know, 10 minutes or so. <laughs> I mean, he's a black lab through and through. If you set it in front of him, he'll eat it. Unless it's a pickle skin. Although he ate the pickle, just left the skin. It was kind of funny. I still need to figure out if I can make a, a Black Lab statue. I'd have to figure that one out. Um, are, Axonim, are you doing all those dino statues freehand, or or do you, do you have a uh, reference of some kind? And if so, what reference? Because uh, I, I might like to see if they, they have a dog statue that uh, I could use. Maybe that's what I'll maybe that's what I'll put below the bottom floor, a uh, uh, sleeping Java. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, I do. I do structures and landscape. I struggle immensely with statuary and that kind of thing, and even some of this that uh, I don't. I don't do so well on the color selection. Yeah, you know, I had to I had to get some help on figuring out which colors would work and which ones wouldn't for the basic floor design. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I just I don't know. I struggle with statuary. That feels like it should be a uh, a card in gloom. If you have never played that game, that is a fun one to get. Um, it's by Keith Baker, the same guy who put together the Eberron campaign setting. And your goal, every player has a family, and your goal is to make them unhappy. The family that dies the least happy wins. Um, which, so, yeah, of course the name is Gloom. But here's the thing. In order to lay down a card you have to work it into the story. So it becomes a collaborative storytelling exercise as a card game. And the cards are transparent backed with the writing on them. So you're layering cards on top of each other and you can play cards on other people's families to make them happy. But again, you have to make it all fit the story. So, you know, there there's a card that adds a, a negative value, uh, you know, terrified by topiary. But you can't just play that down. Ah, they're terrified by topiary. You, you have to actually work in from the cards that were previously played into the story that, yes, they had yada yada, but they got jumped by a, by a shrub and now they're terrified by topiary. Or you know something that something that works it into the storyline for everything else that's going on, and is that collaborative storytelling that becomes absolutely amazing and fun and so much fun. We, we've uh, we've all made some interesting <laughs> some interesting stories and uh, yeah. Yeah, it, so the game is called Gloom. There's the base deck. There's a couple of expansions, and I like that they actually took the time to uh, work out the expansions so that way you can kind of separate them back out. Uh, not as easily as uh, as some other games that I've played, but that is, uh, you, you can separate them out. Oh, a role-play Monopoly. Uh, <laughs> I can I can see where that would be interesting. 
I, yeah, I have to think about that one a little bit. I don't know how I feel about that. Role play Monopoly. I think I'm done with everything. So while I park my body here, let's get the camera real quick. So again, th this is the main hall. That's the front door. I've got some second floor rooms off on each of the sides. And there's one design on the floor and another design on the ceiling below. Uh, and so that's the next step in those basement floors is figuring out some sort of design like that that uh, will fit in so that way so it'll fit in with the red will fit in with the orange the yellow the green the blue the magenta and the white <laughs> I promise I won't do it again and get caught. <laughs> yeah, that, although we, uh, for very good reasons, we, we don't play Monopoly. You see, Reyest and I were taught to play Monopoly somewhat competitively. Okay, more than somewhat competitively. But like, uh, like maybe that, that line from Conan about, you know, crushing your enemies and hearing the lamentations. That, that kind of, that kind of level of, uh, <laughs> of monopoly. So we don't, we don't play that one much, uh. There's a game called Diplomacy that Arcadius keeps trying to get everybody to play, but uh, we have to keep reminding him that we would like to all be, you know, friends later on. A and so that's that's not one to play. Is this why you guys are... Why are you jumping off the sides of the stairs? I, uh, okay. Like, that's why you've got 18 health, isn't it? And 19 and... Yeah, so there, there's some games that we have that we don't we don't play. Uh, there's some that you really have to watch Rayest because she will absolutely sandbag until the last play. All right, so that's gonna unload. Um, a little bit further there we go i need to get the roof done and then figure out the walls like like uh tuesday yeah this past tuesday i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to work with the glazed terracotta for the walls so like since this is the orange floor i'll do something with the orange glazed terracotta on the walls here and I'll leave the roof for last until I can figure out what to do with that. And same all the way up and down. So red glazed terracotta. Uh, that's part of the reason why nobody plays Takenoko anymore. Um, <laughs> that is a fun game too. Oh no, that's Reyes typing all that in. Okay. Yes, nobody plays Takenoko with Reyes because she sandbags until the very end and all of a sudden you start seeing the cards uh, the cards falling down in flocks. Like, okay, and I get two points for this and three points for that and we get to advance this here and... Oh, look at that. I win. Out of curiosity. Yeah, I think I'll yeah, I think I'll do the deep slate brick for the, the wall for the rafters. 
gonna have to go get a load. Yeah, exactly. There, there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on too. Like, like you know, oh, you had all that together already, even, huh? <laughs> so you know, we we try to do more of the uh, the cooperative type stuff. <laughs> Uh, although I, I will admit that the game pandemic has uh, lost a little bit of its uh, attraction here lately. Although that was a that was always a popular popular one. Um, every now and again, we try to play Dungeon, which is a really nice game if you want something that's very quick and easy to set up, fun to play, and then. Uh, and then go from there. My only problem with Dungeon is that um, it is very random. It is very role dependent. Uh, and, uh, well, let's just say I'm somebody's statistics paper waiting to happen because of the number of times I can consistently roll low. And, and yeah. I, I am the bottom half holding up everybody else's average. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there was another one that we tried a couple of times, and I don't think we've played since then. Uh, the... the Escape from Haunted Hill, House on the Haunted Hill. Betrayal on the House of the Hill, says the voice in my ear. Because <laughs> uh, if I remember right, that's one where the layout is randomized, so it's a, it's a different board every time. And I do like the games that try to make them uh, a, a little more random, because like, uh, I love playing Heroes Quest. But it's been hard to get a game going here lately because we keep forgetting where we were at and what an appropriate wealth by level is. And you can only run the first three dungeons so many times before you kind of can sleepwalk them. I can't remember if it's Hero Quest or Hero's Quest, but uh, dial back the Wayback Machine to the late 80s and it, it's kind of a oversimplified D&D. Uh, I think they did, somebody put together a re-release relatively recently that has updated minis and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that would be it. Um, <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody did a re-release not too far back. The minis apparently look a lot better. Uh, you even get an actual uh, Sir Ragnavar or Ragnavar or whoever it was you had to rescue from the first couple. Um, that, that is a separate character that you can put on the board. But I've also heard people kind of complain about some of the other minis and there were, there were a few things that kind of got uh, changed on the down low. But, I mean, it's not bad. Uh, I, we never got a chance to actually try it out. I found a module for, um, what's the tabletop? Uh, the tabletop, virtual tabletop we were trying to play. Yeah, no, tabletop simulator. Um, a module for tabletop simulator that, uh, that has the Hero's Quest, Hero Quest board and whatnot uh, painstakingly put together um, we, we've been using uh, tabletop simulator for a while and there, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with that we're trying to move to tailspire because it fixes some of the things that we're kind of missing from tabletop simulator um, like actually having a vertical <laughs> axis yeah you know, it, it's kind of hard to educate uh people who are flying when you don't have a way to move the mini up uh, up and down 
Uh, you know, we're, we're doing hacky things like throwing a column on the table and putting the character on top of the column and renaming him Flying uh, 60 Feet. <laughs> I mean, you could do that if you're willing to keep doing that. And, and But, uh, yeah. Uh, I got access to the group mine, so I might be able to pull that off, although I might make my own. I got a few stuff on my to-do list that I kind of lost track of, and I really think that, uh, oh, um, Mountain Path from the Back Door. That's going to happen when we update the server to 1.19 because uh, uh, I want to use mud bricks for that and play with that. Uh, I need to finish the squid farm that I started and messed up. Uh, I got that skelly spawner off to the side. I got it Now that I got the floors put together, I need to figure out which floor is the best one to build a hallway off of to, uh, to access the skelly spawner. And that'll give me local access to that. And, uh, yeah, I am, uh, I am rapidly fading. <laughs> I'm rapidly fading. It wasn't that bad a day at work. It, a couple of the repairs were a little rough, but there wasn't that many of them. I just, uh, I've had a change in medication and it, it's given me these headaches. That's why I've got the gaming glasses on tonight, which did help a little bit. But, um, I think I'm gonna call it a night. Uh, still, two and a half hours is, is longer than I've been doing here lately, and that is good to, good fun. This is why I say thank you for joining along, and that I hope you had fun. Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern is always Coffee Craft. Uh, Fridays has been a little bit of a grab bag. Mostly I've been working on that, that parts caster for a friend of mine, but uh, I... In order to do what I need to do next, I need uh, a little more focus and a steadier hand than I could manage tonight. And then uh, I, I really hope to have that finished next week or within the next week because uh, I'm, I'm running out of August and I really need it ready by September. So let's see who's available for a raid. It looks like Grimly is... Yeah. I mean, it's already the 19th of August. I, I got, uh, what, a little better than a week? Yeah. yeah it's coming together. It's coming together. Uh, mostly it's some of the inlay work. I need to... Um, I don't know how well this is going to come up on this camera because of the lighting. But I want to clean up that inlay there, and I need to finish the inlay I was working on on the back. Um, I didn't do some of the inlay as deep as I should have. And then once it's all done, I got to sand back the old finish and add a new finish. And that's going to take a little while. That's not hard. It's just a lot of sanding. Like everybody was telling me, I, I should probably just do, uh, I should have done today's, uh, today's stream as uh, ASMR sanding with Anon Jr. Today we're going to sand and sand and sand. And no, I, I wasn't, I wasn't about to do that. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, but before I lose complete coherence, let's go ahead and give Grimly a raid. Thank you for sticking along. Tuesdays and Fridays, 6.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern, or at least they're adjacent. Uh, I'm going to hit start the raid. Let's go say hello to Grimly as he plays Lost Ark, and I'll see you next time.